Christ was born. So tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace.
us with the dawn of redeeming grace.
worship assistant here at East Point First Mount United Methodist Church, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this 11 a.m. service here at the church today. Believe it or not, this is the fourth Sunday in December, and that means it is actually the last worship service that we'll be ha having for 2021. It's hard to believe, but just think, we've come this far by faith, and we have been blessed on our both spiritual and personal journey for the year 2021. And I know it's not over quite yet, but we have been blessed to come this far. Now, if you would just join with me in bowing your head, we will take this moment to welcome the Holy Spirit into this service. Because he's Lord God, we take this moment to thank you for this day. It is the day that you have made, and it's one that we could ever see before. And we ask that your Holy Spirit be present with us during this time of worship. This is the day that you have made, and we are glad and rejoice again. Church, I wound up at this for you. It is my pleasure to share several reminders of activity at the church. First and foremost, today, please be aware that the Make It Plain Sermon Discussion will begin today. The discussion, which begins at 1230 today, will be the final one. Also, on the Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., the EPFM Clothes Closet is open for clothes donation if you have some to give and distribution to those who are in need of sweaters, coats, blankets, socks, and other warm items. Please keep in mind that the EPFM Watch Night Service will be on the last day of this year, which is Friday, December 31st, 2021, and it will be at 6 p.m. It is an in-service, an in-person service, as well as an online service. So you'll be able to get a weekend. You'll have to tune in for that. On the next day, January 1st, 2022, well, that Saturday is the first day of the whole year of 2022. And the Atlanta chapter of the NAACP will hold its Jubilee Day program here at EPFM in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, the time is um, begins at 9 a.m. Also, remember that January 1st is also called Freedom Day. Why is it called Freedom Day? It's called Freedom Day because on January 1st, 1863, was the first official issue day of the Emancipation Proclamation. And what did that do? The proclamation said that those who were enslaved in the rebellious states shall now be free thereon. So Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, basically are all the same, and it is a wonderful time for us to remember that our freedom uh, began in the, on that day in those years. Of course, many people sought their freedom beforehand, who could blame them, but January 1, 1863 is the official day for the Emancipation Proclamation issue. Also, uh, during this time, which today is December 26, this also happens to be the first day of Kwanzaa. So if someone says to you, Habari uh, Nani, which is the key Swahili word, phrase for saying, uh, what's the news or what's happening? Uh, Martin Gaines phrase, what's happening, what's going on. So that's what that means. And the principle for today, seven principles are celebrated each seven days from December 26th to January 1. And today's principle and your response for the Barigani would be Umoja, which means unity. Now, you know there's one thing that we had to celebrate yesterday, which was our commemoration of the birth of the Lord Jesus. And today and the rest of our days, we are continue to celebrate that, but we also take time to remember that what we received from the Lord, uh, the Lord God was a very precious gift, and that gift was His Son. And He has given to us the most valuable, the most precious thing that Thank you. 
Our scripture for the morning comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 9. That's the Gospel according to John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 9. Would you please stand for the reading of God's holy word? John writes, In the beginning was the word. Jackson, Lord, blessing us with song, Lord. We, you gave 
The Bible talks about angels. It talks about the resurrection to come, but they didn't believe about it. And these are supposed to be the religious leaders of that day. That's right. Uh, Gideon saw an angel. Uh, an angel fed, fed Elijah by the brook. So, so why do we not believe what God's word already tells them? So Jesus came and they missed the life. You see, life is a very important concept in the Bible. Life is a very important concept in the Bible. Can anyone tell me what God's first four words are? Anybody tell me? Let there be light. Let there be light. That's Genesis 1 and 3. Now, in Genesis 1 and 2, the, the Spirit of God moved across the face of the waters. But it didn't change anything. But when Jesus, when God said, let there be light, that was the beginning of change. That was the beginning of creation. That was when everything began to start to happen because he said, let there be light. Before that, it was just darkness. But once light came into the world, things began to change. See, that was the beginning. But then we have our beginning. Our beginning, John tells us in 1 John, Five, uh, 1 John, 1 John 1, uh, 5 through 7. He says this. This is the message that we have that we heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's the gospel message. If you're going to be with God, you need to be with God in the light. And if you're with God in the light, then we're one with each other. And if we're one with each other, then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. That's the gospel message. But you see, we want to do it our way. We don't care about one another, but it says that if you're walking in life, you become one with each other. We don't care about anybody but us. We say that we're following God. We we're doing it our own path. We're doing it our own way. And what we end up doing is walking in darkness. You know, there are a lot of churches that preach against the mass and preach against vaccinations. And I believe that they are also walking in darkness. See, it's not only that we hear here about being together in Christ. Paul writes to the church of Colossae uh, in 1 and 12. He writes, giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Some translations say in the kingdom of light. We share, which means we are together. He enables you, which means he doesn't force you. He just allows it to happen. He's giving you a way to be in fellowship with him. But that's the one. <laughs> so there are three short points that I have here. The first point is that Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. Let's go back to our scriptures for the morning. Verse 4 says this. And him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light of all people. Then verse 9, the, nine, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Yes, that's the light. That's Jesus. And that's why we're here, because of him and him being the light. Jesus said this in 8 12, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Once again, he says, those who follow him, not those who do it their own way, but those who follow him, then that's walking in the light. You see, the light still shines. So Jesus is the light, but we are his light. We are his light. Jesus says in John 9 and 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Well, we know that Jesus is not physically with us anymore. 
Yes, he's with us in the world because he's alive and he's a spirit, but he's not physically with us anymore. So he prepared his disciples beforehand in Matthew 5, 14 to 16. He tells his disciples, you are the light of the world. That's right. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one got the light of a lamp puts it under the bushel basket. But on the lampstand, it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You are the light of the world. But we need to understand that our light isn't our light. <laughs> our light isn't our light. John 14 and 7, Jesus on the promise of the Holy Spirit says that you will know him because he will be with you and he will be in you. You see, the Holy Spirit lives in each of the believers of Christ. And so it's not our light to shine, but it's Christ's light in us shining out of us. We're talking about the light still shines, which, which, which brings me to my last point. Let his light shine in you. Let his light shine in you. You can't do it your way. That's why in Ephesians 5 and 8, we hear this. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. Live of children of light. Otherwise, let your light shine. But how are we to let our light shine? How are others supposed to know that we are followers of God? How are they supposed to see our light? But I would argue one way is by the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 6, uh, 6 22, 22 to 23. 5, 22 to 23. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. You see, when you are full with God, when you are full with God's Spirit, then some of the times you begin to change. And you begin to have love other people. You begin to have joy when the circumstances are down. You begin to have, have peace when your circumstances don't line up with you. That's how you will see your light. And we are supposed to let our light shine. That's why Paul wrote in Philippians 2 and 5 that we are to let our light shine in this crooked and perverse generation. You see, Paul saw way back then that they were living in a crooked and perverse generation. And I don't know about you, when I look at the world today, when I look at the news today, when I read the newspaper today, I know that we live in a crooked and perverse generation. But he said, so let your light shine as stars before them. We are to let our light shine so that people may see our good works. You see, the light still shines. The light still shines. But the light shines when we shine. The light of Christ shines when you shine. The light of Christ shines in us when you shine in the world. Like a star in this crooked and perverse generation when you let your light shine. The people will know that Jesus is alive when you let your light shine. You will know the people, people will know that Jesus is real when you let your light shine. That's right. So let your light shine. Let your light shine. Because Jesus is the light. You are his light, not your light. Let his light shine in you. And when it shines in you, it will shine through you. And it will illuminate you. It will break up everything around you. Because the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome it. As we pull out 2021, we're going into 2022 with a new act. With a new focus. Our three-fold focus for 2022 is going to be prayer, faith, and unity. Well, prayer, faith, and unity. It all begins with prayer. You see, a, 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 a church that's not praying is a dying church. Unless you undergird everything with prayer, it does not matter. It may be in God's will, but not undergird with prayer. I don't believe in God's own blessing. It's got to start with prayer. And then it moves to faith. 
Because it's not about what we have or what we can see. Paul says that we focus on things that are not seen because the things that are seen are permanent, are, 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 are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So we have to have faith because without faith it's impossible to please God. We can't be looking at the extras and those and say, well, we can't do that and we can't do that. We don't have enough of this. We don't have enough of that. That's no faith in God. Because our God has all the resources. God has hell on a thousand hills. God has all the gold, all the silver. That's what it says in his book. Right. So we have to have faith. But then we have to have unity. We have to do it together. So if you, if you have gotten out of the church, then come back to the church. And if you've never been in the church, you need to come to the church so that you can do the work that God's calling us to do. Now, you don't have to come in person. You can be online, but there's other things that you do that you have to show up for. But unity means we need to be of the same mind. And that same mind that is in you, that we need to have the same mind that is in Christ Jesus. We're talking about that in your light shine. You see, when you let your light shine, then the light of Christ shines in this world. And the darkness can now overcome. The darkness will never, ever, ever overcome. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. If you've not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then His Holy Spirit is not bridging you. And you don't have His life in you. And you don't have salvation. You don't have forgiveness for your sins. You don't have eternal life. So if you want all these things, then just say this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I can't do it on my own. I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. Come, Lord. Be my Lord and my Savior. If you said this simple prayer, we believe that you're born again. But you don't let it stop there. God has so much more for you. Jesus says that he came to give you an abundant life. Not an abundant death, but an abundant life. So part of church is going to teach you God's word. Not philosophy. Uh, not, not psychology. And not even religion. But teaches you God's word. Now if you want to join with us here at EPFM, just send a letter or email to pastor at EPFM. UMC Pastor at UMC And I'll get back with you and we'll talk about what your next steps are. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world.